Yeah, that, that's, this is working. I was hoping it would, but it's nice when, uh, it, it's nice when it does. I think that illusions are pretty cool. There are a ton of optical illusions out there where our eyes and brains are confused, like this Herman grid, where there's just a bunch of black squares on a white background, and it actually appears that there are grey dots appearing between them, unless you look directly at the dot where it will disappear. There aren't any grey dots at all. It's an illusion. Our brains and eyes are being fooled. Or this Munker white illusion. Are one of the sets of green lines brighter or lighter than the other? Well, if we move the black lines out of the way, you will see that they're actually identical in colour. We've been tricked. If you're interested in more optical illusions, check out michaelback.de because there are dozens of examples over there. There's a link in the linked file in the description. There's also the barber pole illusion, where the coloured stripes look as though they are moving up or down forever, depending on which way the cylinder is rotating. But actually, they're just going around in a circle, not moving up or down. Optical illusions are cool. Our brains set out to understand the world, and we have the tools to do so. But sometimes we run into the limit of our perception, and we can leverage this to see little quirks. Often it's our brain trying to make sense of something, trying to see something that we think should be there, but isn't. But did you know that there are also auditory illusions? These are illusions that we hear instead of see. There are quite a few of these, perhaps not quite as many as there are optical illusions, but they're still really cool. Let's look at one, the McGurk effect. I'm going to say a word, but I'm going to split the screen and have two mouths moving. What word am I saying? Face. 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 Look from one to the other. I'm not changing the word that I'm saying. If you rewind the section, you'll only be able to hear one thing. Face. 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 One of the mouths is mouthing face, but the other is mouthing face. When you look at the mouth that is mouthing the word, that's what you perceive. Even though the only word that I've said is face. 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 Each sound we make makes a certain facial shape. And our brains, in trying to find meaning, often go with what we can see when it comes to language. This is what we call the McGurk effect. There are plenty of other auditory illusions, but there's one that I find especially fascinating and I'm going to attempt to recreate it today using a trombone. But first, let me give an example. Video games are really cool. In Super Mario 64, a really cool effect is used. There's a staircase that you climb that goes on forever. The staircase keeps generating forever. You can't get to the top usually. To pair with this, an auditory illusion is added. Listen to the sound that happens. It keeps rising and rising. It goes on forever, but it doesn't because that's impossible. Humans only have a very narrow range of hearing. There are only so many frequencies that we can hear before it goes supersonic and we can't perceive sound anymore. Check out my video on making a bottle pan pipe or why music sounds weird on TikTok if you want to learn more about how sound and pictures work. There are links below, but basically, we raise the pitch, make something higher by increasing the speed of the vibrations. But after a certain point, you can't hear it. As you age, you can actually hear less high sounds. But most adults can hear frequencies of 15 to 17 kilohertz. But that means there's a limit. Music can't just go up and up forever. But how does the staircase work then? Well, it's an illusion. And it's called a shepherd's tone, or a shepherd scale, named after Roger Shepherd, who discovered this illusion. It's caused by actually having several different voices layered on top of one another, each rising, but then when it nears the top, it fades out before fading in and restarting at the bottom. And today, I want to recreate that with a trombone. Okay, so I've got my trombone here. I've also just slightly off screen, I've got my computer, I've got my 
audio editing software open and I'm going to try and make a shepherd tone using the trombone. Now I reckon it may be possible to do this just purely analog but there's only one of me and I want to just see if I can prove this concept you know in the future if I get a bunch of trombone players together maybe I don't know. Um, I'm gonna just do a scale. This instrument can do a gliss where I just use the slide to change the pitch. Uh, I have already tried doing that to make a shepherd tone, but it sounded really weird. So I'm going to see if I can make it work with a scale instead. I'm going to play a scale of B flat because it's kind of, if you're playing a brass instrument in a, in a concert band setting or a classical setting, that's generally the scale that you start with. Uh, and I'm just going to do a B flat. It makes sense for this instrument to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slowly play it and then I'm going to chop out all of the gaps and uh, adjust the volume of each note so that I can really well fade in and fade out. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to press record on here and we'll give it a go. Okay, now that I've played them all, I'm going to go through and edit this and see what I can end up with. Okay, so now that I've cut it all up, I need to set it and I want each note to go for about the same amount of time, which means I'm probably gonna be cutting off some starts and ends because I wasn't using a metronome to record it. Could have, but didn't. So I'm gonna go through and make sure they're the same length because when I layer them, I want to make sure that they are identical across the octaves. So like a B is the B flat's the same length as a B flat, a C is the same length as a C, and so on. Otherwise it's gonna mess around, I think. So I'm gonna do that now. Now that I've done that, I need to adjust the volume so that the lowest, so the first and last notes are the softest, and then they're gonna gradually build up into the kind of the middle, and then I can add some more voices, some more layers. Okay, so over two octaves, that works okay, but now, is where it's going to get interesting because I need to now layer it so that we've got multiple things going at once. Let's just, I, I don't know how this is going to go. This is the part that I'm excited about because this is the part where we're trying things. So we'll give it a go. It, it's, I'm listening back to the first time now, and it's it's kind of working. I'm thrilled. That, that's really cool. <laughs> that's great. I love that. Let's add a few more. Uh, let's make it a bit longer. But yeah, that that's this is working. Which I thought it would. I I had I I was hoping it would, but it's nice when uh, it it's nice when it does. Love that. <laughs> and there we have it. Now, was this a perfect illusion? No, I was only working within two octaves. If I were able to use a third, I actually think it would have worked better. Perhaps that's for another time. I'd also really be interested to see if you could do this with a much larger ensemble. Could you play it with a whole band? Well, maybe, and some people have 
especially with strings. There are some links in the linked file if you are interested in learning more. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. Our brains try to make sense of the world, but there are limits to our perception and we can leverage this to have some fun with it and find some quirks. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to know in the comments below and with the like button. And if you haven't already done so, I invite you to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool, where I make videos about things that inspire in me a sense of curiosity and wonder. Thank you once again for watching. Take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.